Hello and welcome to this lab demonstration on controlling VM resources. After completing this lab video, you will be able to control VM resources. In particular, you will know how to manage CPU allocation based on shares that you configure per virtual machine. While the ESXi hypervisor does a great job in utilizing and distributing the available hardware CPU resources across all its virtual machines, you might want to control which virtual machines should be prioritized in case of CPU contention. The options you have to control CPU allocation are CPU shares, reservations and limits. Actually, you can apply these three settings not only to CPU and memory resources, but also to storage IOPS and network bandwidth resources. In this lab, we will focus on CPU shares. To benefit from this lab demonstration, you should know the vSphere client user interface and you should have some basic understanding of virtualized resources. In the first task of this lab exercise, we want to reconfigure two existing virtual machines so that it is more likely to create CPU contention. We will use CPU affinity so that both virtual machines have to use the same logical CPU and we will run a script on both virtual machines that generates high CPU load. This intentional suboptimal configuration will lead to performance degradation. In the second task, we will configure one virtual machine with a high CPU share and the other virtual machine with a low CPU share and then examine how this configuration will affect performance on the two virtual machines. I'm sure I provided you enough good reasons to watch the following video on controlling VM resources. Now let's get started. We want to perform the configuration on vCenter server SA VCSA01. So the first step is to connect to this server. Then we log in as administrator at vSphere.local. In the first task, we will artificially cause CPU contention. We will force two virtual machines, Win1002 and Win1004, to exclusively run on the same CPU core and we will start an application on the virtual machines that causes high CPU load. So in the navigation pane we have to select hosts and clusters. And in the ICM data center under lab servers we find two ESXi hosts SAESXi01 and SAESXi02. Let's expand the two ESXi servers so that we see what virtual machines are running on each of them. And we can see that the two virtual machines that we want to configure are both running on ESXi host SAESXi02. So first we want to shut down these virtual machines. So we right click Windows 1002, then we select power and we click shut down guest OS. We confirm and then we do the same for the second virtual machine. Then we want to migrate them to ESXi host SAESXi01. So I right click Win1002, I select Migrate. I want to change the compute resource only, so I click Next. Then we select the ESXi host where we want to migrate the VM to. We click Next. We have to select the network. So we want the source port group production to be destination port group production. And as a result, our VM will have its network adapter one in port group production. So we click next. 
and we click finish. We can see that the virtual machine has been moved to ESXi host SAESXi01. And now we do the same for virtual machine Win1004. So we right click, we select migrate. We want to change compute resources only. The ESXi host should be SAESXi01. The port group is the same on the destination ESXi host. We click next and we click finish. Now we want to configure these two virtual machines to run only on logical CPU one on their ESXi host. So I right click Win1002, I click edit settings, I expand the CPU here and in scheduling affinity, I enter one. This means that this virtual machine is only allowed to run on logical CPU one on this ESXi host. We click OK. Now we do the same for the second virtual machine, Win1004. Again, we set the affinity to one and we click OK. Now we power on the two virtual machines. So we right click the virtual machine, we select power and click power on. And we do the same for the second virtual machine. So that both virtual machines, Win1002 and Win1004, are currently booting. Now let me select the first virtual machine, Win1002. Let's expand CPU and let's have a look at the shares. And we can see that the normal setting is chosen here, which is equivalent to 1000 shares. Now we select the second virtual machine, Win1004, and we do the same check. And again, we see that shares are configured as normal 1000 shares. This means that both virtual machines have the same configuration. Now let me go back to the first virtual machine and launch a web console. We are automatically logged into the virtual machine. And here we have the script CPU busy. Now I right click the script and I select open with command prompt. And this script performs 10 million sign computations and displays the number of seconds it took to do this computation. Now we go to the other virtual machine, Win1004. We open a web console for this one as well. And again, we right click the CPU busy script and we open it with a command prompt. Now these two virtual machines will compete for the CPU cycles. And since these are highly CPU intensive scripts that do the sign computations, they will compete for the CPU cycles. And remember, we configured them, we forced them to run on the same logical CPU. So it will take a little time now until the situation stabilizes and the CPU contention resolves in a way that these two virtual machines get an equal share of CPU cycles. And once this happened, we will see that both on both sides, the script will take about the same amount of time to do the 10 million sign computations. 
So let's have a look. Right now we see six seconds per 10 million signs on virtual machine Win 1004. And we see eight seconds on virtual machine Win 1002. As said, it can take a little bit of time until the situation stabilizes. But then we should see about the same values. And we've got six seconds on Win 1002 now. And we have six seconds on Win 1004. They are configured with the same amount of CPU shares, 1000. So during CPU contention, each virtual machine gets about the same amount of CPU cycles. And that's what we can see in this script. We get about the same values for the sign computations. So let's go to the second task where we want to control the CPU allocation. We want to prioritize the CPU resources of one of the two virtual machines. Actually, we will configure virtual machine Win1002 with a high CPU share and the other virtual machine Win1004 will be configured with a low CPU share. These settings translate to 2000 shares for the high CPU option and 500 shares for the low CPU configuration. So as a result, we should end up with a 4 to 1 ratio during CPU contention. So let's change the shares. We start with virtual machine Win1002. We right click it. Then we go to edit settings. We expand the CPU option and we change the shares from normal to high here. And you see that the setting high equals to 2000 shares. Instead of using the predefined share values of low, normal, high, we could also select custom and then simply enter a share number. But in our case, we want to use high, so 2000 shares. We click OK. Now we go to the second virtual machine, Win1004. We right click the virtual machine, we select Edit Settings, we expand the CPU configuration, and we change the CPU shares from normal to low. This reduces the shares from the normal setting, which were 1000 shares to 500 shares. So what we've got now is 4000 shares on Win1002 and 500 shares on Win1004. Again, it will take a little bit of time until the situation stabilizes. Currently we see a higher amount of seconds on Win1004. At the moment it's in the range of 12 to 15 seconds. And when we have a look at Win1002, then we see three or four seconds. Considering that this virtual machine here, Win1002, gets four times the CPU cycles that we get on Win1004, when we have a look at the values, we see that this is roughly also represented in the result of our computations. The longer we wait, the more stable the numbers will become. So once the situation stabilized, we will see relatively constant numbers. Right now we see four seconds on Win1002 and 17 and 15 seconds were the last two values on Win1004. So we clearly see that we modified the behavior quite a bit. We prioritized virtual machine Win1002 substantially over virtual machine Win1004 with regards to the CPU cycles.
So right now we have about 15 seconds on wind 1004 and we have between three and four seconds on wind 1002, which pretty much matches the one to four ratio. Okay, so let me close the scripts so that we stop stressing the CPU. We can close our console windows and that wraps up this lab exercise. Congratulations! You have completed the Controlling VM Resources lab demonstration video. In the first task of this lab, we created CPU contention by forcing two virtual machines to run on the same logical CPU and by running a script that generated high CPU activity. We saw that with the default settings, the two virtual machines got equal share of the CPU on which they were both running. In the second task, we configured CPU share values, not by setting share numbers, but by using the predefined options. High, which equals 2000 shares on Win 1002, and low, which equals 500 shares on Win 1004. And we saw this ratio of 4 to 1 CPU cycles also being reflected in the script that we ran on the two virtual machines. You now know how to allocate CPU cycles to virtual machines during CPU contention. Do not forget that in addition to the CPU shares that we configured in this lab, you can also configure CPU reservations and limits for even better control of CPU allocation across virtual machines. And finally, Make sure that you monitor resource utilization carefully so that you can add resources if you face CPU contention too often. Thank you for watching this lab demonstration video. I hope the knowledge acquired here will help you with your daily job assignments and good luck as you continue your journey in VMware world.